I'm Steve Morgan, Editor-in-Chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Claire O'Neill, Australia's Minister for Cybersecurity and Minister for Home Affairs, was named as our 2022 Cybersecurity Person of the Year. We recently got the chance to speak with her when our editor-at-large delivered the award in person. It's so nice of you to, to bring this award with you. And I just say, you know, I'm sure that the readers of Cybercrime Magazine live in countries around the world that Australia needs to collaborate with to fight this cybercrime and cybersecurity epidemic that we face. And um, we've got to work together on this one. It's actually um, frighteningly common, the issues that we face across these major countries. And that collaboration is going to be really important for us getting on top of these issues for our citizens. David Bray, our editor-at-large, is joining us from Australia. David, tell us about your experience delivering the award to Claire. What was the experience like? Oh, it was, uh, it was great to meet her. Uh, you know, she's uh, one of the people that you see on TV a lot, and uh, you know, she's one of the senior ministers of the government. Uh, so it was a nice coincidence that I was able to drop in and catch up with her to present the award. I met her at her local offices. She represents an area called Hotham, which is right near where I live. It was a, a real, uh, a real coup, I think. And you know, it, it, just to, be, to know that what she's doing is making a difference, and she really made that very clear. I think when we were talking. So we asked uh, Claire about her role as the Australian Minister for Cybersecurity. Let's hear her thoughts. I have been in this role um, since the election. So I've spent uh, almost a decade in Australia's federal parliament. And um, most of that time we've actually been in opposition. We have a Westminster system. So when you're in opposition, you do a lot of ideas development and thinking about the problems of the future. But you don't get to do a lot because you don't hold the reins of government. But that did change for us in May last year. And when we won the election, the Prime Minister designated me as both the Minister for Home Affairs and, more importantly for this conversation, as Australia's first Cabinet Minister with responsibility specifically for cybersecurity. So the reason that the Australian Government made this change, and it's been a very important one for our country, is um, recognising that cybersecurity isn't a sideshow in politics and national security anymore. It is a pivotal issue. And it should be seen along those other kind of critical matters in defence and domestic security that matter most to keeping our citizens safe. So I think the, the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, recognised that we've got to play some catch up here. And that's the reality for Australia. We didn't get the activity around cybersecurity that we needed over the past decade. So my job as cybersecurity minister is to help our country really push so that we can get on par with the countries that are doing this best around the world, but I want us to go even further. And by 2030, my aspiration for Australia is that we're the most cyber secure country in the world. And my big job is to design the strategy and implement it that will get us there. David, Claire says she wants Australia to become the most cyber secure country in the world by 2030. That's an ambitious goal. You've written a lot on cyber crime and cyber security. Do you think that's possible? I mean, with the constant threats, uh, you know, coming at nations globally, can Australia rise to the challenge? Well, it definitely is an ambitious goal, Stephen. It's good to have a target. Um, she came into this role uh, with a pretty significant change of government in Australia. There was a conservative government for about nine years before that. And um, so, so the uh, party that she's part of now, the Labour Party, had basically been watching and waiting in the wings uh, for, for a long time. They they have the sort of the, the ability to observe and report and plan strategy, uh, but they can't really do much until they actually have government. So last year, when they, when the Labor Party won government, uh, it was really time to come out of the gates at uh, at full speed, and they, they've done that over the past year or so. And of course, uh, ended up having to deal with two of the largest hacks in Australian history, which was one of the major telecommunications companies, and uh, the largest private health insurance company. Each one of those involved nearly 10 million people. And in a country of 26 million people, that's a lot of people. It was a major, major thing. So she, I think, really came to be very proactive about that. And she was making the statements like that uh, within the context of some, some pretty significant cyber activity. And she's basically just said, this is enough. This is our goal. We're going to be the most cyber secure country by 2030. And we're going to do what it takes to get there. In terms of what did we learn, i just point out two really quick things. I think one of them is is common to cybersecurity um, around the, the world, and that is that most cybersecurity acts, um, attacks are completely preventable if you do some pretty basic hygiene in your security. And so I just keep offering that to Australian companies and indeed to governments because we have these risks also. We can prevent most cyber attacks. We just have to do the right thing. And if you don't have two-factor authentication, what are you doing? If you're not having complex password requirements, you know, they, these are the basic things that you, you're... Our readers will be so well aware of. 
The second thing that's been really interesting for me is I don't see um, the attention being given to cyber incident response that is appropriate. And the reason I raise that is because everyone who's watching um, this now will know this to be the absolute reality. We cannot reduce cyber risk to zero. There is no way to do that. The internet is porous. It's in everything and it's a part of all of our lives now. And even if we take all of the essential precautions and we do all of the things to fortify our countries, cyber attacks will continue to occur. So part of our resilience for the future is how quickly can we get back off the map and start punching back at these people. Um, and so we've done a lot of thinking in Australia about well, were we ready for those attacks within government and within the private sector? Probably not as well as we should have been. So I've done a lot of work and thinking about how we can be better next time. There was a big difference between the handling of Optus and the handling of Medi Medibank. And I think we'll see more differences as, um, as Australia does inevitably experience some future attacks. In order for the US and Australia and the rest of the world to beat back cybercrime, we need more cyber fighters. The world has three and a half million open positions presently. It's not getting any better. We've uh, seen this rise from a million positions in 2013. We were interested to hear what Claire had to say. Something I see um, having great success, bearing great fruit um, in government organizations and business in Australia is a real expansion thinking about what cyber expertise might look like. And I see lots of companies that are taking people who don't particularly have a technology background and giving them great training in management and assessment of risk and all of those bits and pieces that maybe don't require a degree in engineering or something along those lines. Um, you know, great um, opportunities to bring women into the cyber workforce, to bring neurodiverse people into the cyber workforce. So when I go into the Australian Signals Directorate now, which is our intelligence agency that deals with, um, that sort of is the home for most of our cyber expertise in the Australian government, it's an unbelievably diverse work workforce. I think more so than any other part of the Australian government that I can think of. Um, and I think that's demonstrated there that there's actually some benefits to that to that shortage of people. We're, we're picking up groups that we really need to attract into cyber to make sure that we've got, um, you know, a breadth of thinking around some of these problems. David, you previously wrote an article about Claire O'Neill for us uh, in Cybercrime Magazine. Before we go, any final thoughts you want to share, anything you might have uh, missed in the article? I think that it's really important that we consider how the government can help uh, with uh, building a, you know, a cyber secure culture uh, nationwide. There really has been a lot of effort. Uh, you know, CISA, for example, in America has, uh, has been working really hard with that. We had the Shields Up campaign over the last year that there is a real opportunity for leadership at the government level. And it helps sort of lift the, t you know, the rising tide lifts all boats, as they say. I think that if the, the government is talking about being very proactive about security, that it's going to um, really set the climate for for businesses to do the you know make the investments that they need to and to really do the things that are necessary to get themselves secure. There's also been a, a big push in Australia and as as in other places to really, I think, make board members aware and even responsible for cybersecurity. There's an increasing onus on them to make sure that they're actually doing the right thing. And there have been cases where directors of companies have been held accountable for not being cyber secure enough. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that over time. Uh, this is where the the um, I think the proactivity of someone like Claire O'Neill really is going to set the set the pace because if the government sets those expectations, we'll, we're all going to have to fall in line over time, and that's that can only be, I think, uh, of, of benefit to everybody. Joining us today was our editor at large, David Bray. To learn more about our cybersecurity person of the year, go to cybercrimemagazine.com. <laughs>